Good morning, everyone, and welcome back again to The Green Room. I'm joined by my good friend, John Mullen, the energy evangelist. Hi, John. Hello. <laughs> and uh, just can you recap uh, as to what you actually do, John, so that the folks at home can, uh, can hear it from you? Okay. Uh, I help people reduce their energy usage right across their business. I also help them with their contracts, but it's trying to find the right solution for their business so that they don't give money away. It goes back into their pockets rather than into the pocket of the suppliers. Sounds great. So today we're actually going to be talking about leadership and management and what John's just said is going to play a big part of that because it's about who drives this scheme and the environmental ethos forward as to how you actually put that money back in your pocket. But let's just go to a quick advert first. Hi, I'm Laura Short and I run the Green at Heart Awards scheme. This is an environmental accreditation for small businesses from all sectors who want to show their customers that they're responsible, proactive and sustainable. By following a structured approach to Green at Heart, you'll be putting in place cost and time saving measures that will help reduce more than just your carbon footprint. Are you passionate about having a sustainable business? Well, in my book, that means still being in business 12 months from now. It's more important than ever to set your business apart from the rest and customers are expecting you to go that extra mile. So let's grab a coffee and have a chat about how a Green at Heart Award can help your business stay open, stay green and grow. Let's head back to the green room and see what we're talking about today. Welcome back. <laughs> so, um, of course, having top management, your MD, your CEO uh, on board with an environmental award and having an environmental ethos in general is just so important in order to drive that change forward. So how would you say, John, that top management need to be involved? What role do they need to play? I My heartfelt desire is to see the right from the MD right down to the bottom layers, everybody wanting to get involved in it. Because today, there is, we're just using far more than we can ever generate even or even afford uh, and it's it's more of okay where do we want to be in the future I, I want to see us taking on new attitudes for the future so that we can actually look after this planet that's a, that's a great point and and as you said it should be about having every level of the organization involved uh, and delegating those day-to-day -day operations possibly to an environmental champion or somebody at each level within the organization that then uh, reviews and feeds back to top management but ultimately it does have to be the md the ceo and um, whoever's at the very top of your organization that drives that change and puts in those very high level goals those overarching objectives so what sort of things should uh, a CEO and MD be looking at in terms of goal setting to lead that scheme forward, John? Well, I think nine times out of 10, well, 99 times out of 100, it all comes down to profits and costs within a company. If the MD actually wants to increase his profits, we know as a fact, this has been stated by practically every energy supplier, that 30% of energy is wasted within a company. So if we can start to pull back a few percent, maybe 10%, maybe 20%, that could be a massive saving for a company and it also would be a big reduction in the amount of energy that we use yeah that sounds great um and in terms of actually uh where that should that should come from within the organization obviously that depends on the company itself whether energy mm -hmm. is your main focus whether waste is your main focus but it, it very much relies on the board the md the ceo um 
and e and even the, the the top level of middle management to be involved in those um, crucial decisions as to how the business is going to go about saving money. What are their significant um, changes going to be? And then it comes down to the energy champions, those people within each level of the organisation to actually push that forward on a day to day basis. They're the ones who are going to be um, recording the consumption. They're the ones who are going to be going to the staff to come up with ideas, holding the team meetings um, where environment is uh, a factor within that and then reporting back. So do you have any examples of where this has worked successfully in businesses you've worked with, John? I, uh, well, one of the biggest companies that I've dealt with, they were wasting so much. Uh, a part of their manufacturing process was that they had a lot of hot water. And they actually realized, well, that hot water is just going down the drain. So their attitude was, how can we recover some of that heat from the hot water before it's disposed of and then stored and then pumped back into the process so that they weren't actually going to need to reheat the water to such a high level again. So it's, it's looking at the full processes right across your company. Uh, every company's different. You, you walk into a care home, it's roasting. But what can we do about that? Whether it be insulation or whether it be just, you know, a revolving door on the front door so they don't lose so much heat. There's, there's all sorts of ideas. So come and talk to us. Yeah. And it's, it's about having that strong leadership that drives effective management of a scheme like this or, or any environmental change that you need to make. So we're going to wrap up there today. Uh, next month, we're going to be talking about your environmental policy and how all the, all the elements that you put into your environmental impact register that we talked about in the, the first month uh, will actually be used to compile a suitable environmental policy for your business. So uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye.